In honor of Fred McGriff being elected to the Hall of Fame by the Contemporary Era Committee, I wanted to take a look at just how underappreciated and underrated he was, both in his own time and even more recently. And honestly, it's astounding to me how little recognition he's gotten. McGriff was a first baseman who had a career slash line of 284, 377, 509, and an OPS plus of 134, over 19 big league seasons, although only 16 of those were full seasons. In that time, he collected 2,490 hits, 441 doubles, and 493 home runs. He was a model of consistency, having 10 seasons with 30 or more home runs, 8 seasons with 100 or more RBIs, 8 seasons with an OPS over 900, 15 seasons with an OPS over 800, 10 seasons with a slugging of over 500, and in all of his 16 full seasons he had an on-base percentage of over 350. He was automatic for essentially his entire career, and yet if you look at his accolades, it seems barren. He was only an All-Star five times, was only in the top five in MVP voting once, and only had three Silver Sluggers. Now, the basic answer for this is, well, duh, he played in the steroid era. And while this is true, it doesn't quite tell the whole story. My first example is his rookie season, which was fantastic, with a slash line of 247, 376, 505, and an OPS of 881. Now, I don't think he should have won, as the AL Rookie of the Year was a pre steroids Mark McGuire who absolutely mashed. But if you look at the playing field, you'll notice something. He didn't even get a vote. Not one. And by the way, his own teammate, Nelson Liriano, who played 37 games, got a vote. And by comparison, his season was pathetic. F asked me, was he good defensively? It doesn't matter. The difference between McGriff and Liriano offensively was almost the same as McGuire and the average at the time. That is absurd. Next, I went through all the seasons that he could have been an All-Star and checked the competition to see what it was like. In my opinion, there are five total times he should have been an All-Star instead of another player that was picked based on their first half stats. This was in 1988, 1989, and 1990. 1990 was the only year in this bunch that's even close to being an argument, with the rest being ridiculous. In 1991, Eddie Murray and Will Clark were picked over him, and in 2001, it was Tony Clark. With these comparisons, it's not as though these guys didn't deserve to be picked. Crime Dog just deserved it more. Also, as a side note, Crime Dog is such a cool nickname, he literally had that dog in him. During his career, he was underrated, and he was consistent the whole time. But let's look at his career compared to others. Using McGriff's career numbers in hits, doubles, home runs, on-base percentage, and OPS as the minimum, this is the company he's keeping. All of the guys on this list are either Hall of Famers, Steroids, or Miguel Cabrera. Some of you may notice a distinct lack of Albert Pujols, and that's because he misses the requirement for on-base percentage by three points. Another comparison is pointing out that even in his later years, he was still effective and downright great, and the company he kept is downright elite. From 1997 to 2002, his age 33 to 38 seasons, only these 12 other players had a higher OPS plus than he did in that span. And these are some incredible hitters, and he was the oldest in this section by at least four years, excluding Rafael Palmeiro. This is another testament to how reliable he was no matter where or when he played. And by the way, the only real large market team he played for was the Braves, which probably didn't help his lack of notoriety. For a final anecdote that shows this lack of confidence in McGriff by most, we need to go back to his high school days. When he was a sophomore, he tried out for his high school team and was totally overmatched, not really having any size to him and was cut from the team. He managed to make his way back as a junior and even hit a mammoth home run off of young phenom Doc Gooden, who'd said that it was one of the longest home runs he'd ever given up in the majors or otherwise. So it's safe to say that this dog had plenty of bite. That joke was terrible, I'm very sorry. Underrated players are a product of a lot of things, whether it's personality or other better players at their time, and it happens in every sport. But I think it's our duty as fans to look at these guys and say they need more recognition. Fred McGriff is a Hall of Famer. There's no doubt in my mind about that, and the decision to put him there was the right one. Thanks for watching.